So thank you so much for agreeing to chat to us tonight. Ah, uh, good. Now, mate, yeah. I've got to say, we are so excited about you guys being able to head down under for the first time. How do you guys feel about being able to finally get to Australia? Yeah, no, very excited. I, I, I think um, every now and again we like check our Spotify listeners, and I think Australia's like it's the US and Australia that are actually our biggest markets. So. Um, yeah, interested to come and see how how that turned out. Because it was, I mean, I'm hoping it's kind of a similar experience how we went, uh, how it was when we went to Japan. Because that was just being that far away from home. It, I, I don't know. Every, America kind of feels. I mean, I, again, I don't know what it's going to feel like with Australia, but America kind of feels like an extension of the UK and vice versa um, in like many ways. But Australia being that far away from home, it's just crazy that people even listen to us and seeing our friends in sleep token and holding absence being out there and the reception that they've gotten is just kind of more excited to come and see what it's like for us what was it like when you went to japan was that a little bit of a cultural shock being so far away from home honestly initially yeah and then um I mean, because I'm half Arab anyway, so I've, got, so I've kind of grown up with a mixture of the British culture and Arab culture, like quite intense on both sides. And um, so, like, very, some some very, like, strict things growing up and some very lenient things growing up. So I kind of, like, managed to hit the best of both, the, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then, um, the, yeah, it was really strange. Like, so I feel as though I was kind of prepared to. A technical shock. I know for the other guys it was like proper crazy, but um, yeah, it was it was just amazing. It was like shock at first, and then after a while it was a bit. Actually, I could get used to this. This is this is definitely more on more on my wavelength. But like, everyone there cares a lot more about what they do than most people in like Western uh, society and Western culture and all that kind of stuff. Because there's a lot there's a lot in Western culture that I've kind of like grown to really dislike, and um, there's a lot in cultures like. Japanese culture that I felt like I related to quite quite well. Yeah. So um, after it, it, it always feels like a, a spiritual second home for me. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's really cool. I guess that leads me to ask, what do you know about Australian culture? Honestly, not not too much. It's just I just know that really good music comes out of there, and um, there was actually. I've watched lots of videos in Australia, especially there's a, there was a guy from London, his, his, what's his name? Joseph Kendrick or something like that. He like circumnavigated the entirety of Australia on a taxi bike. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely crazy. So uh, God used to keep up to date with all his videos and all that kind of stuff in Australia. And that kind of, uh, yeah, and, like the wildlife and all that kind of stuff absolutely fascinates me. So um, I'm just going that I'm not going to be able to go like diving off like the Great Barrier Reef and all that kind of stuff when we're down there because we head straight up to America after we're done. But um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of like people like Tame and Bala. You know, I, I grew up listening to um, you know Parkway and North Lane and all those all those bands. You so, mentioned uh, that yeah. you know that you've got a pretty big following here in Australia. Um, a lot of Australian music fans are very very passionate. Have you come across that Aussie passion with your fans online so far? Uh, yeah, we've, we've had loads of messages about you know people going to um, people wanting us to come out to Australia since. I mean, for years now, so it's exciting, it's exciting to kind of finally be able to deliver on that front. And there's a lot of, there's, a, there's quite a few people that I've grown to know through music um, that, that live in Australia. So I, I chat to, I chat to uh, Twiggy from Motion Grove a lot. Um, I got a friend in a, in a band called uh, Voyager uh, called, um, his name's Scott, he's, he's in Perth. I, I, another, I, I chat to a bunch of people in Perth. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a tour. I finally get to meet a bunch of people I've been speaking to for a while in person, which is going to be nice. So has the trip to Australia been something that you guys have been wanting to do for a long time? Because I know it's one of the more difficult trips for a band to do for a tour because we are so far away, but is it It sounds like it's been something that you guys have wanted to do for a long time. Oh, hugely, yeah, definitely. I think um, it's just a very, very exciting place. I mean... I, I love traveling anyway. Like I, I, I want to see. I mean, I, I, thankfully, I've been able to travel a lot in um, when I was when I was younger, or like up until now. And um, the band has taken us to little places as well. And I just the the traveling aspect of it is almost as um, as fun 
as fulfilling as the actual playing of the shows. Because, you know, yeah, a lot of the memories that you make from a tour are actually in the travelling. Now, we've all heard here in Australia what an amazing live band you guys are. You've built a reputation on being a fantastic live band. What have you got in store for your Aussie fans with these shows? I think just the, the excitement that we're going to be playing that far away from home, the furthest from home we've ever played, is just going to be enough to kind of spur us on. And obviously, the first time we, it's the first time we've been there, so I think, like, just the energy in the room. I mean, it's just, it was a similar thing to these American shows we just did with Code Orange. So the band had toured America just before I joined anyway. And then but the, the one with Code Orange was like the first proper full America tour the West Coast in the middle of, you know, uh, you know, Colorado, Salt Lake City, or Omaha, all those places. And playing somewhere new, far away from home for the first time, there is that kind of energy that you can't, you can't. It, it, it just happens when you get there. So it's kind of like when that we're just naturally expecting for it to kind of be like this this crazy kind of spectacle. So <laughs> what's what's the last couple of years been like for you guys with the world in lockdowns and everything with the pandemic and you guys like I said, are an amazing live band. What was that like, suddenly not being able to play shows and not being able to get out there amongst your fans? I think... Because we're all, like, relatively introverted people. I, I, I feel like we do value our own, our own space and our own time. So... I think we spend a lot of time kind of just developing ourselves as people... Um, I don't we, we didn't really do what I think a lot of people expected and that was just like write a whole new record in, in the time during lockdown because I think like because um, it got here we were kind of just like in our own worlds and we were kind of just like, like I said just developing ourselves as people like you know spiritually physically kind of just finding ourselves a bit more and then um, almost enjoying the downtime and then obviously we did we ended up doing that ambient record, which I, which I felt like was a response to the stresses of having everything kind of taken away from us when we just released the record. Um, but at the same time, it almost did us a favor. Like the, the timing of when our last, I, I'm going to say, pro, I'm going to say proper record, like full band record instead of like the ambient record. When our last proper record came out, I felt like it, it, it was a lot of people's go-to for the time when nothing was happening. Yeah. So people kind of were found a solace in it, and then, a, and then kind of the product of that then came in the form of the things they believe in terms of like an ambient record that you could meditate to, work to, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Tell me to shut up if this is too personal, but I know for a lot of us, we learnt a lot of stuff about ourselves. Um, during that time, did you find that you learned a lot of things about yourself during that time when you weren't out on the road and and were spending a lot of time by yourself? Yeah, hugely. It, to me, it kind of um, it made me realize the importance of, of being yourself and creating. I mean, that sounds cheesy, but it's because you're almost for, you are kind of forced to be by yourself. You weren't having these social interactions after a while. There was, you know, you are basically holding up a mirror to yourself because you were the only person you were really spending time with. That, I mean, that and your family as well. And um, yeah, so I spent a lot of time, a, a, a lot of time with my family. Um, I discovered new interests and hobbies that I didn't think were something, anything that I'd be interested in at all. Um, there was, yeah, just, just diving deep spiritually, to be honest. And just kind of realizing where the priorities lie for certain things and how to kind of navigate my own kind of internal mechanisms and all that kind of stuff, if that makes any sense at all. I know that's yeah, very yeah. vague, but um, yeah. You, you mentioned the things they believe coming out during that time as well, and a, a lot of people have said that's the, the best album that the band has done so far. 
Um, will you guys be doing anything live off that album? Or like you said before, because I noticed you said proper albums before that. So will you be doing anything live off that album or not? Uh, off uh, Things They Believe. The yeah, album. yep. Um, we did do it on our last headline tour. I think it's I think it's definitely like a headline tour type of thing because I feel like everyone in the band has got so many songs that we want to play. And I feel like sometimes we we struggle to cram in everything that we want. So obviously the, the kind of instruments and ambient stuff will kind of fall to the wayside to kind of make way to play in a full band song. Um, but it's definitely something that we want to incorporate into uh, kind of like headline shows a bit more, just to kind of add like another because it, it was it was, there was some really cool moments on um, on the headline but when we were kind of adding or sprinkling all that kind of stuff in between. Um, in between songs and, and whatnot, but it's definitely not the last record that kind of style that we want to do. I think that those kind of things will come in different forms. It may not be uh, exactly in the same way that things they believe happen, but everyone in the band is kind of very much into instrumental music and other ways and other styles of music that we don't really want to limit ourselves to just being a heavy band putting out records to stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, you kind of touched on this, uh, but my next question was actually going to be, you guys have got so many amazing tracks now in your catalogue. How do you go about picking what tracks to play with shows like this, especially when it's your first time playing in front of your Aussie audience? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I think for any tracks that we don't get to play, we've been fortunate enough to kind of have have the demand to then go ahead and like play one or two headline shows in those countries. So we that happened in Japan, uh, it happened in America, and we are doing another headline show in Melbourne as well. So I feel like the one for <laughs> like we want to play as many songs as possible. So having the odd headline show on a tour where we're not able to perform like what would be classed as like our full set where we can kind of have all the bells and whistles um, present to kind of present to everyone. Uh, I think that was the, the headline shows definitely helped to kind of quench that thirst for that. But um, the process of kind of thinking of what songs to play is heavily centered on what people want to hear if we're going to somewhere new. And then also there'll be like 25, 20% where it's just this is because we really enjoyed this playing the song live. But now that barrier is kind of being blurred, and we're kind of enjoying what what the, uh, what our most popular tunes are and all that kind of stuff. So there's a nice. It feels very natural. I think that like the set that we have uh, planned is um, it kind of is all encompassing. Yeah. What we want to kind of portray is the band. Yeah. As the band. I noticed before you said you've all got your favorite tracks to play live, so that I have to ask now: yeah. what are your favorite tracks to play live, and why? Um, my, there is new uh, new faces, God, to a mirror, and I let it in are probably like my favorite ones. I think um, there was yeah, just because I feel like the two a mirror stuff. The, well, the Mirror song is like very shoegazy, and I, that, I come from like the kind of I, I, I come from like the kind of more indie kind of background, all that kind of stuff. So certain songs where it's a lot more laid back, but then I also love when something's just absolutely chaotic as well. So I'm a very um, extreme person in both directions. <laughs> so I kind of want a lot, a lot of just wall of sound, just noise, just drony type stuff, but then also just absolute chaos as well. Now, we spoke to While She Sleeps the other day, um, and they were telling their fans why people should head along to the shows to check you guys out. So for your fans that are reading this or listening to this right now, why should they go along and check out While She Sleeps? Uh, I think they're just kind of the... Well, it's weird because I feel like they're the kind of the generation above us in like a musical perspective and within the scene. 
So I think they're just a very, very well oiled machine and they're very, very good at what they do. And I, I think that anyone who's, into, anyone who's into that kind of music won't be disappointed with going to see them because it's, it's, it's madness every time they play. It's, it's really cool to watch. We, t- we toured with them back in September. And um, yeah, live, it's just, it's just madness. It's really cool. I'm kind of jealous of bad bars sometimes because I'm just like that. <laughs> it looks like they're having so much fun, whereas I like, that's like we're a lot more kind of reserved. But um, yeah. Has anyone warned you about the Aussie audiences um, at shows? Because we've got a bit of a reputation of being a bit of a crazy bunch at shows, a little bit wild. Have you heard about those stories? And is that something that you're looking forward to seeing your Aussie fans go off in the crowd? I've, I've, honest, I've honestly not heard that, but I think I, mean, I, I just enjoy it when it's just getting completely out of hand. Like, you know, make the, make the security sweat a little bit. Definitely. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we just we, honestly, we just want it to be as as chaotic as possible, like just complete madness the whole way through. So, um, hopefully that'll be that'll be what happens. Faisal, you mentioned before about. Australian wildlife and Australian animals and I noticed that you've got a couple of days for, of free when you're here in Australia will you be heading along to anywhere like zoos or anything like that to check out some of the Australian wildlife we won't be heading out to any zoos I think I'll just um, just any sort of like woodland areas I just like go and, and, and chill out in I think that's just, just just taking in like the natural nature so not necessarily like a zoo type environment but um, I think oh, which island is it where there's quokkas, the, smi- the, the the little smiling rodents? Yeah, Rottnest Island. Yep, that's in Western Australia. Yeah, yeah. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I don't know whether we'll be able to get out and, and, and see them. That would be like that would be like top of my list. Yeah, go and see them, but I don't know if we'll be able to. But... <laughs> you, you sound like someone that has a really strong connection to nature. Is not is nature something that inspires you? Yeah, hugely. I think it's it's uh, it's definitely where I feel most at ease. I think um, it's just. I mean, we we were just away. Well, I was just away down in South Wales, like some some holiday home for a little while, and um, there was like a beach nearby, and I was just every morning I just go down, and sit on the rocks, as the tide had just gone out really far, and uh, just meditate for ages, just close my eyes, and like 30 minutes later, I just open them, and I'm like, at this amazing kind of like little tranquil break in the cliff, just, that just leads down to the sea, it was beautiful, but yeah, no, nature is, um, I mean, th- that was one thing that kind of happened to me during that lockdown, it was realising how connected to nature I need to be, and then realising how unconnected to nature we're kind of programmed and not forced to be, but everyone's kind of like, it, the, it, that's like Western society thing where I feel like it just guides you away from nature. Whereas I feel like every, every single thing that's done should be to guide people back to nature because I think that's the source of a lot of anxiety socially is just this disconnect from everything and this want to kind of connect with something where it's nature is just right there. And it's, on most people's doorstep so i think that's something that simple that is the answer to a lot of things might not be the cure but it's the answer definitely well mate we are right out of time so i just want to say again thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us tonight and we cannot wait to see you guys in australia yes man i'll see you soon